I'm live? Yep. Okay. Hi, good evening everybody. My name is Sarah Solis and I'm a realtor with Spears & Co. here in Rockport. And like so many of us, we are homebound right now. So we are having fun ways to uh, communicate with everybody and show everybody a little bit about what we do at home. So one of my favorite things to do is bake. And tonight I wanted to show you and walk you through my recipe for um, one of our family favorites, which is my cinnamon rolls. So I didn't come up with a recipe. This isn't something that was handed down generation to generation or anything. Um, my grandparents, my mothers, my fathers, they all have great recipes, but this one I actually found online. And I actually have a copy of it that I'll post, but it's uh, actually found at the Ambitious Kitchen. And now that I'm online, I'm gonna find it. Let's see here. Okay, so you'll find it at ambitiouskitchen.com, but I'm gonna go ahead and post the recipe when we're finished. And as many times as I've made this, I'm still gonna have it up because I'm doing it with you live and I don't wanna screw up. So first we're gonna start out with our ingredients. You're going to have um, warm milk, needs to be warmed up. You can warm it in the microwave, which I'm gonna do in a minute, uh, to 110 degrees. You'll need live yeast. You'll need your granula granulated sugar, one fourth cup. You'll need two eggs, and I'll show you we're gonna actually not use all of it, which is kind of weird, but we're gonna do that. Salt, melted butter, and our flour. So first things first is I'm gonna wash your hands because I've done a couple things before I started doing this. And washing hands, I know it's kind of crazy, but because it's my kitchen, but I do it about 20 times a day anyway. And I'm not gonna sing any songs out loud to you or anything like that, but I know lots of people are making up things to sing to so they can make sure their hands are nice and clean. All right. So, like I said, first things first, I'm gonna take my milk and I do place it in my microwave for about 45 seconds. And I use, you have, I mean, if you have a thermometer, I'm using a candy thermometer, which is probably not the correct one, but I have these, I have another thermometer that I can't find. Um, anything that can register 110 degrees is what you're gonna be looking for. It's just for your yeast to get to be activated. If it's not exactly 110, it's not the end of the world. If your yeast doesn't start doing little bubbling things, then it may not activate, but I can tell you, your rolls will probably turn out just fine. It's just if the milk is way too cold. Um, another thing I was gonna mention is my lovely apron that I was able to pick up at the Coastal Mercantile downtown. It's one of my favorites. Um, it always is nice and cozy. And when you're cooking, you need to be comfortable. So I've got my milk. I usually just kind of stir it around a minute. teaspoons of uh, active yeast, which is typically a packet of yeast. I bake enough that I buy the big jar, and I also don't measure out my fourth, because I kind of eyeball that as well, but it's two and a quarter. And my grandma always taught me, even though the recipe doesn't call for it, I add just a little sugar in there to help that move along. All right, so while that's doing its thing, those of you who don't have a mixer, um, I feel for you. I don't know what else to do. 
Uh, my lovely husband bought this mixer for me years and years ago. I don't know what my kitchen would be like without it. Um, anything I'm doing, you can do by hand, but obviously with the mixer and the dough hook, it makes everything a lot easier and a lot faster. Okay, so I've kind of let that percolate. It doesn't have to be too long. Remember, like if you're using a bread mixer or a machine, uh, typically you just throw everything in there and it all kind of happens. So you can just let it sit there while you're doing a couple other things. All right. So I poured that into my mixer. That was my yeast mix. Next, I'm gonna add the entire thing of the fourth of a cup of sugar. Okay. And then I'm gonna go over some egg training for those of you who uh, just things my mom taught me. First of all, we're all in an age right now. If you got eggs from HEB or Walmart, you know, wow, hallelujah, right? A lot of people are getting the farm fresh eggs. My mom grew up on a farm, and when I was really little, she taught me when you have eggs, make sure to break them not in your mixture and the reason is is because you never know what's going to come out of these little guys um it would be really disappointing if you ruined an entire mixture when you broke that egg so there's my first egg now this recipe actually calls for an entire egg and then the yolk of a second egg so what i'm doing is i'm breaking it i split it in half and then i rock it back and forth and when i rock it back and forth the yolk stays in the shell, and that's all I need. And those are room temperature. So most of the ingredients I use, except for the milk usually, I do like to get uh, to room temperature. And then, oh. I like to stir these a little bit before I put them in my um, mixture, just because the dough hook doesn't do a great job of breaking that up very fast. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this on. I'm just gonna just start mixing things and moving things around. I hope it's not too loud. Um, so I put in my eggs, my sugar, my mixture. I'm gonna pour in my butter. This is a half a stick. I always buy these little half sticks just because they're real easy. So this is an entire half stick completely melted down. Okay. And so I'm gonna let that mix for, I don't know, 20 seconds or so. Uh, not very long. This bread whole mixture doesn't take very long at all to actually put together. It's one of my favorites. Um, again, we're making cinnamon rolls. Um, total time to make this is probably about an hour. After we get done mixing all this together, I've already made another batch starting and it should be risen by the time we're finished. So again, I'm just mixing this up. And I'm going to just, so I have three cups of flour. And I'm going to just start kind of adding this around. And I'm going to pep up the speed a little bit. So I put the whole three cups in. But I always have a little container of extra flour. Um, that's because... You're gonna probably need it once you get further in. If it's too sticky, you're gonna have to add, but you add just a little bit at a time. You never wanna add like a whole extra thing. You wanna do it very little at a bit, a little at a time. Another thing that I like to have handy, wooden spoon. Um, you can't have enough wooden spoons in your kitchen. They're not just good for like smacking your kids. Baking bread, my favorite thing to do. All right, so it's already mixed everything together, so now I'm just going to let it roll the, in the dough hook for a little while. Um, typically, you do need to let your dough uh, go for probably four to five minutes. Um, just for this segment purpose, I'm probably not going to let the whole thing go, um, but it, just a couple things. is after, to your, When you're to this point, you're going to have your flour here. This is definitely too sticky. I can just tell um, what you can do is you can stop your machine or whatever, kind of put your fingers in there. If it's really, really tacky, just add a little bit at a time. 
You should almost see like sheet layers or rose petals, the way the dough looks, it's like rose petals. Um, that's when you know it's starting to kind of dry out and then you let it go a little bit further. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my machine off, lift it up. See, it's very, it's, it's kind of breaking, but see how it's very tacky. So you don't want it like that. But I am gonna take my, my spoon, kind of pull it around the bottom. Yeah, very, way too tacky, way too tacky. All right, so put it back down in there. But you're gonna do that until when you roll it into your hands, put a little flour in your hands, pick it up, roll it, and when it just barely taps to you is when you know it's ready. You'll take a bowl, spray it with oil, like this. You can use traditional, I'm very lazy, I use that. Um, some people might take oil with a paper towel, whatever you have is fine. So you're gonna get your bowl ready. is when I have the bread in the bowl from earlier, I set my oven at 350 when I begin, and then I put the bowl kind of in the center of the top of the, uh, on the top of the oven. It likes to have a little bit of heat when it's rising, kind of helps. So now I've got this real airy, very airy bread. parents gave me this thing. There's like a castaway thing written on here. So this is probably like super ancient. Um, it has been washed a thousand times, but castaways likes to write things on there that never come off. So this is a little Tupperware plastic thing I like to work on. Um, so basically I'm going to knead out the bread a little bit. And then I'm going to basically try to get this as flat as I can. Um, you really have to work it. You want to have it about nine inches wide and about 12 long. And it does take some doing. Just try to get it all squished. It doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing's perfect. Just have fun. I like being in the kitchen. Really, as long as it has something sweet and icing on it, my family will eat it. Right, husband? He's the cameraman. He's shaking his head. All right. So, that is, that's fine. That'll work. All right. So, have butter. This part is like super easy. 
So you're just gonna take your butter. I'm gonna do that so I don't have to touch it. I like to try to get a little bit more square, but it's being kind of stubborn. And you just smear the butter. And if you don't have stick butter, I mean, you can use whatever. You can use margarine out of the tub, um, really whatever you want. I mean, margarine out of the tub probably works better than this. If, like this is soft, but it's not soft as much as I like it. So for this purpose, I'm gonna just work with it. All right. Okay, we got the butter on there. Other two main ingredients, brown sugar, cinnamon. Okay. It's kind of funny, I'm teaching my husband how to make these at the same time. <laughs> you gonna make these, honey? He's gone mute on me. Okay, so you get real generous with the cinnamon. There's cinnamon rolls. And the way cinnamon works, it's you do want quite a bit. And then you can use light sugar, light brown sugar, dark brown sugar, it doesn't matter. Brown sugar. The sweeter the better. And there, I'm sorry, there are no measurements for this. It's really a matter of taste. I like to kind of go crazy with it. Um, just kind of mix it around. As long as it's kind of halfway even, you're good. All right. So now you have pretty much what makes a cinnamon roll. And I'm gonna kind of push those edges out a little bit. And then the next part is you're just gonna start rolling. Kind of one side, just kind of roll it up. Try to get it kind of tight, just because if it's too loose, your cinnamon roll kind of will, it kind of unravels. So if you wanna just try to get it a little tighter, you roll it up. And you can pull this kind of, you're not gonna, if you pull your margarine stuff to the edge like I tend to, this isn't gonna stay sealed. Uh, I just like it all the way to the edges, the way I like to do it. So kind of do that and then roll it over. So now you have this roll. Now, I don't know what, if you've ever cut anything, but um, I just use thread. You can use wire, but thread really works well. Before I do that, I need to make sure I spray the pan. Okay, so this is my favorite pan. Um, I don't know if you have a favorite pan, but I have lots of beautiful glass pans and pretty pans and pans with designs on them. This is literally my favorite pan. It bakes the best. It is the ugliest pan in the world, but it's seriously, it, it's like, it always makes the best rolls. But anyway, you wanna just spray it real light. All right, easy peasy. So to deal with the string, you're just gonna kinda lay it underneath your roll, and all you do is kinda pull with a pulling motion until it undoes, so twist it and pull makes this really pretty roll. This should make probably a dozen. You wanna cut them about an inch wide, like that. And so just to clarify, that's pretty much the end of making cinnamon rolls. Um, so that's what it looks like. So you'll just lay them in your pan. You will put them touching too. Don't, don't put them to where they're like spread apart. Um, that when they touch, that makes them really soft. Um, if you like really crispy outer edges, then yeah, go ahead and put them further apart. I do not. I like my cinnamon rolls really fluffy. Um, but again, just put it under there and then cross over, pull, and it just makes a really pretty little pinwheel. And You'll just start lining your pan. Now, after you get that done, you can actually cover them and wait about five to seven more minutes. They're gonna actually rise up a little bit again, and then you can throw them in the oven. If you don't want them right away, you can cover them. I like press and seal, just cover them up. You can put them in the refrigerator, and then in the morning, you can pull them out, let them warm up maybe 10, 12 minutes, Maybe the, just the time your oven preheats, throw them in, and you can prep them at night and cook them in the morning. 
So that is my spiel on cinnamon rolls. Um, and you'll cook them, like I'm about to put these in. So they're gonna cook for about 20 to 24 minutes. Um, really, like around the 20 minute mark, kind of check it. Just see how brown they are. Every pan is different, everybody's oven is different. So it's really a good idea just to kind of check it as you go through, you don't want burnt cinnamon rolls. Um, middle rack, so 20, 24 minutes on 350. You should make at least a dozen with this recipe. Very easy, you can use it for some other things. Thanks for joining me tonight. I look forward to seeing what you guys come up with and in a little while I'll post some pictures of our finished product. Have a good night everybody.